All right, the college football week three previews, and I am excited about this one. Who is going to get the highest ratings of the week? Here is what I've got. I think Penn State and Auburn is going to be the highest rated game of the week because I think there's going to be some crazy, crazy shenanigans going on in this game. There always is for Auburn home games in Jordan-Hare. Always. And, of course, Penn State finds ways to make games closer than they really should be. So I think you're going to get down to possibly a last possession kind of game. If you do that, there's going to be a lot of people tuning in to CBS in the middle of the day to watch these two big brand programs. Uh, The other that could end up with pretty high ratings, Oklahoma and Nebraska. I don't know what Scott Frost being gone will do to these ratings. I think these are two big-time brands. Two big-time fan bases that will be heavily invested in this game. So uh, that one could be the highest rating of the week. Uh, along with that, A&M and Miami, my only issue with that is it is a later game. It's an 8 p.m. Eastern time kickoff. Uh, excuse me, 9 p.m. Eastern time kick. I think that's going to hurt the ratings a little bit. Uh, BYU and Oregon, I think, could be really surprising in the ratings That one's going to be huge. Uh, And then you've got Washington, Michigan State. It's going to be on ABC. USC Fresno, the late window, could end up drawing maybe more than $2 million, possibly. Uh, We'll we'll have to see. But those are the ones that I think will get the highest ratings. Now, moving along from there, the most exciting games of the weekend, I have got Auburn and Penn State. I just told you about that one. I really think that those two... uh, there's just there's going to be all kind of voodoo happening in that stadium. It's going to be nuts. Uh, Oregon and BYU, I think it's going to be insanely exciting and really, really close. I think that's going to be a super close game. Kansas and Houston, you want to talk about exciting. I think you're going to see some massive plays, maybe some turnovers, maybe from Clayton too. Yeah, we'll see. But I think that those two, those two teams both can score. I think that'll be a lot of fun. And Houston has gone to overtime two straight games. Kansas went to overtime with West Virginia last week. I, I think that these two are pretty evenly matched, uh, despite what the spread says. Miami and, uh, and A&M, I mean, that, that's a desperation game for A&M, but Miami wants to use this as a springboard for their season. I know it's on the road at Kyle Field, but that one I think could be not necessarily exciting, But it could certainly be a really close game. Fresno-USC, I think you're going to see a ton of explosive plays. Just a ton of them. Because you know that Jake Hayner can throw that ball around. And you've seen what Caleb Williams has been able to do thus far uh, with Mario Williams and, of course, Jordan Addison. So that one could be a lot of fireworks for the late-night window on that. Now, which teams have the most to gain and the most to lose this week? I think Auburn. And maybe just one person. I think Brian Harson has the most to lose this week in a home game against Penn State. Uh, Oregon BYU. Um, I think BYU has the most to gain this week. That one, of course, uh, a pretty big deal for them because I mean you, they're already getting playoff talk two weeks into the season. They got a win over Baylor without their two best wide receivers, and now everybody's talking about. Hey, you look at that schedule. Might be able to find a way to get them in there. Uh, Notre Dame and Cal, Notre Dame, I think, has the most to lose here, right? Now, obviously, the most to gain because they would like to, uh, they would like to get their first win under Marcus Freeman, but they've also got the most to lose because, again, they don't have a win, and this is one of the easier teams on the schedule. Cal has looked pretty good so far with Plummer at quarterback, of course, the the Purdue transfer. Um, the most to gain or lose here. Syracuse or Purdue, whichever one. If Purdue starts out the year one and two with losses to Penn State and Syracuse, I don't think things are going to go well there. Like I, I think I think Jeff Brom might be headed to Louisville anyway. But you start out one and two in a season that was supposed to be super promising, a chance to win the West, etc. Ah, that, that one's going to be tough. And for Syracuse, I mean, Dino Babers is fighting for his job every single week. What they're doing on offense under Robert and I has been a lot of fun. Kansas and Houston. Kansas has the most to gain because they could go over their season win total in week three. <laughs> their win total was two and a half. They could go over in just three weeks. Uh, Houston, however, this was supposed to be the New Year's six year. And then they lose at Texas Tech. 
uh, you can't follow that with a loss at home to Kansas, regardless of how good Kansas is. Uh, Vandy, just like Kansas, most to gain because their win total was 2.5. They're sitting at 2-1. and one. So if they can win this game, I don't foresee them winning many more, maybe not any more, but I would imagine this is a pretty big deal for Vanderbilt as well uh, against Northern Illinois. Texas and UTSA, Texas has the most to lose here because they built up a lot of goodwill in that loss to Alabama. Now you got to go out, even without your top two quarterbacks possibly, and find a way to get this dub. you got to be able to beat the in-state. I, I'm not going to call them little brother, but that's how Texas fans view it. UTSA should not be as good as Texas. And yet Jeff Trailer, I know, is going to have a game plan for this. I know it's going to be insane. A&M and Miami, A&M. The most to lose. Holy mackerel. Uh, you cannot lose this game. You cannot lose this game. This thing has all the potential to go completely off the rails if they lose this one to Mario Cristobal and that bunch. Uh, but at the same time, Miami could use this as a springboard for the rest of their season. I got a plus 500 ticket on them to win the ACC, so it, this has nothing to do with that. But it would certainly help out their confidence. Definitely. Um, Arkansas against Missouri State. Arkansas has got the most to lose because Bobby Petrino is coming back home. You cannot lose to the guy that you fired. You can't do it. Don't do that, Sam Pittman. Now, I don't imagine that they will. They they should be able to run over Missouri State with very little uh, pressure back. Uh, just no issues there. Who is the most likely 10-plus uh, point underdog outright winner? What double-digit dog is going to win outright this week? I've hit a couple of them so far. I told you Kansas last week. Look out for Kansas. Kansas is not a double-digit dog this week, though. They are a nine-point underdog right now. Texas Tech is a 10-point dog at NC State. Now, I would imagine that NC State will be able to handle this one at home. But there is not a more volatile college football game on the schedule this weekend. Period. Donovan Smith has the ability to win this game outright for Texas Tech. On the other side, NC State with their defense and that Tech offensive line. I mean, Donovan Smith gave up five sacks last week and threw two interceptions. Still won the game against Houston. NC State's a different beast on on defense. Those linebackers could absolutely, those edge rushers could get to him and they could get him to turn the football over and it could be an absolute debacle. But he could also do some really fun things, right? He can be mobile. He can find what Devin Leary, we have seen, uh, he has been throwing several interceptions as well. He has turned the football over as well. So if you can get something out of Donovan Smith, maybe you make this game really, really exciting. Texas Tech plus 290 over at BetUS. UTSA plus 375 over at BetUS right now. Look, I understand. Texas played Alabama insanely well. It was awesome. But now you've got a bunch of guys hurt. You are beat up. You are banged up. Uh, you you have. I don't I don't even know who Texas plays next week. Let's look this up right now. Texas football schedule. How's that? Um, but that's this could be a look ahead spot. I would imagine it's not. But still, um, I mean, you look at this. Let's see Texas football schedule. They have got. They host. No, they go to Texas Tech next week. Now, I don't imagine that they're looking past UTSA towards Texas Tech, but you cannot lose this game if you're Texas. If you're UTSA, uh, yeah. But yeah, UTSA plus 375, I think it could get a little tricky in Austin on Saturday night. Georgia Southern plus 340. They are more than a 10-point underdog at UAB. Look, UAB turned the football over four times against Liberty last week. You do that again? Georgia Southern could make you pay. Now, don't get me wrong. I think that UAB's defense is really good. I think that they should be favored in this game. Georgia Southern, this is an emotional letdown spot because they just got off the road, just completely ending uh, Scott Frost's career up in Lincoln. But they've shown that you give them an opportunity, they're going to take advantage of it. So Georgia Southern plus 340 is an option here. South Alabama. We've already seen what the Sun Belt East has done. Let's see what the rest of the Sun Belt can do. South Alabama plus 410 at UCLA. Only a 15.5 point dog right now. Opened at 13.5. It's going up. 
kind of like South Alabama in this one. I don't know that they can win the game outright, but they certainly have the dudes. I mean, Carter Bradley's been awesome. He and Jalen Wayne have been so good together. Uh, Fresno plus 375 at USC. All of the turnover luck has gone USC's way thus far. Um, It's possible. Let's just say it's possible. So, all right. The G5 game of the week this week. There's not a lot of options because we are, of course, in non-conference play. Of course, first month of the season. So, a lot of these G5s are playing P5 schools. I don't really like to include those. I did include Houston and Texas Tech last week because uh, it was a massive game for Houston as far as the New Year's Six stuff goes. But this week, G5 game of the week, App State against Troy, I believe. And then the one that I just talked about, Georgia Southern against UAB. Uh, Troy, a massively talented defense. I mean, just ridiculously talented defense. But App State, of course, coming off that win against Texas A&M. And along with that, you have got App State has destroyed Troy for over and over and over again, however many years, four, four straight years, I think, somewhere around there. And you've got College Game Day coming to boot. Like, I don't know that Troy can get the win. I think they could certainly cover. They could certainly cover. But Georgia Southern uh, going to UAB, I don't think is that crazy of a spot, but it is another letdown spot for them. App State, letdown spot for them. Georgia Southern, letdown spot for them. One of them's on the road, one of them's at home, et cetera, et cetera. So G5 games of the week there. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE. And the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.